Hello, Steve White, Trek Boy 89 for Steve Arts 89. Well, I just watched Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 2, Episode 10. I think the episode is called Hegemony. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, it, it wasn't good. There were so many issues. Um, there were some positive things, and there are some positive things with the season overall. The production design, the sets, the costume, the actors, the characters to a degree. But the direction, the way they tell their stories, the lack of science fiction stories, the lack of strange new worlds, the lack of anything new or original, um, the fact they kept going back to things that have already been established and redoing them instead of creating new aliens, new planets, new stories. They could have, the universe is so big, they'd never have to deal with any of the characters or aliens that have been seen in the original series. They could have totally done their own thing. That's what I was hoping for with season two. That's what I was hoping for for season one. Season one did some of that. And I was, and then they did the other, you know, going back and backtracking on characters and scenarios that were already established. Now they have established as a different timeline, although they're still pretending it's not another universe and a reboot. But um, the the timeline excuse kind of does sort of allow for some sort of things. So it makes it easier to sort of stomach that nothing looks right, nothing, you know, is right for the series because it is a different timeline. Um, so yeah, so the episode could have been good. It was, I mean, if they were using a new species, because instead of creating a new species to be the, um, the big bad for the series, because apparently they have to have that each season, um, because it's all in the Wrath of Khan sort of model of, you know, we just fight people in space with mo modern technology. That's basically what they, these people see Star Trek as, not a science fiction show that explores the universe and has unique stories and unique, um, aliens and races and everything. We basically just fight bad guys and we have to have a bad guy and some big issue to deal with each season. That's sort of how New Trek works. But um, yeah, so instead of creating something new, they just changed the Gorn into the Xenomorph and knocked off Alien. Um, and I was hoping they wouldn't, I was hoping they'd backtrack on that with all the criticism they got last season, but no, no, they, they full on go on it. Um, and there's some, some absolute direct ripoffs to Alien in this episode. Um, okay. So, basically, we see a cheap, cheap colony, which is basically made to represent, you know, the, the Midwest town, a Midwest town in Earth, basically, the Midwest in Earth. So, basically, they can shoot in the back lot, and they don't have to create a new planet, a new anything. It's just basically, you know, universal back lot or whatever, or, or Canadian back lot, planet Canada, I don't know, planet Canadian back lot, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just cheap and lame. Um, and Chapel's there helping Pike's girlfriend. Chapel beams up, and then we see a what looks like a Federation shuttle crash, and we see um, a big ship or some sort of device come into the atmosphere. And then everything's cut off, and what we find out is that the Gorn have uh, attacked. They have set up a jamming tower, and basically they've gone in and killed and or turned all the colonists into um, um, breeding stock, basically. So, of course, Pike is freaking out because his girlfriend, you know, Spock is freaking out because Chapel, this Chapel being back to the ship, they find when they get there, the ship has basically been destroyed and it's just um, debris. So they use the debris to sneak a shuttle down, and that's the scene with Ortegas coming right down to the surface and then pulling up. That's because they're basically pretending to be space debris crashing and burning up in the atmosphere. So they get in, they find um, the town basically destroyed. It's suddenly night. Um, and it's kind of creepy. There's some atmosphere. The episode is well directed. The actors do well, of course. It could have been an interesting episode. Like I said, had they used a new species, not just retread the Gorn, had they not ripped off Alien, it could have been interesting with a couple of homages, but um, that's it. Um... They find Scotty, who set up a Gorn trap with human signals, and of course this Scotty, of course, has to look like a younger version of the dumpy um, Scotty from the later movies, instead of how James Dean, James Dean, um, James Doohan actually looked in the original series, which was quite fit and handsome, but of course they go the other way with this. Um, they find a bunch of people who survived, colonists have survived, and they're trying to work out how to get off the planet. So Scotty basically rigged his ship up so we could get in 
and land without being detected, so they figure they can use that to escape, but then it only takes some of the crew members, and when they are there, a Gorn attacks them, but um, Pike's girlfriend gets him in the in the way, doesn't attack her, because obviously they're ripping off the scene from Alien, where um, it doesn't kill Ripley, because Ripley has been impregnated, so she has been used for breeding stock. So she wants to sacrifice herself, but they have another um, another solution which they're not aware of. Basically, Pike um, is trying to work out something on the planet, but they don't know that the Enterprise has worked out something else. They basically, Spock goes out and ta attaches rockets and thrusters, basically, to the saucer section so they can push it into the atmosphere and have it crash and guide it to crash into the um, the jamming tower and then that will resolve all the issues. Because in the meantime, Starfleet has told them they can't cross a certain line that the colony is on and that most of the debris is on and they can't really do anything. So instead of um, obeying Starfleet, they decide to go in on their own um, and that's how they're there in the first place. So Spock goes out in, in, in just a space suit and he doesn't make any attempt to check for any other survivors. We see that somehow, miraculously, Chapel has survived. No one else on the ship has, but she survived, um, and she sets up life support in, a, in an area for an hour or so, and she looks out and sees the Enterprise in the distance. She's filled with hope. She sees Spock actually go right past her window. Um, she goes and gets in a space suit. She goes up to the bridge, which is where he is, because I guess they had to reuse a set, so they have the bridge with a hole in it, and Spock is putting a... A, a thruster there for some reason, I guess so they can reuse the set. And then of course they have the alien scene where the alien comes behind him and they have a slow motion space battle because of course stupid people think that in space you move in slow motion when you actually don't. Um, uh, Chapel comes up while Spock is being choked by the Gorn, which is basically the alien. So he's being choked by the alien. Um, she slow motion gets a um, gets Spock's um, phaser that he's lost in the battle and she shoots the Gorn and distracts it long enough for Spock to slow motion stab um, the Gorn in the um, helmet with a piece of debris from the bridge and it dies. Um, then they basically lift off from the bridge and then the source section goes into the atmosphere and disappointingly we just have a close-up shot, well a shot of Chapel and Spock and then that close-up shot of them holding hands with the um, the, the source section just going into the atmosphere in the distance um, and burning up. It comes in, we see one shot of it burning up. I was really looking forward to this, the source section going through the atmosphere and everything. Instead we just get going off into the distance, then one shot of it crashing through the, um, the jamming tower and landing near um, the shuttle. Everything goes back to normal. They beam um, the shuttle crew up, Pike and that. They're all happy to see um, Chapel and everything. Um, <laughs> Uh, I mean, Spock and that, they didn't even check to see if there was anyone else alive on the ship. Um, apparently, Chapel was the only one surviving. If anyone else was on the ship, they basically just sent them into the atmosphere, so, okay. Um, they don't happen to notice that all the survivors haven't appeared on the Enterprise, they haven't beamed up. They didn't even try to beam them up, because um, this is done for the audience. It's like, oh, we see them beam up, but the, the, the transporter signal is a little green, doesn't quite look right. That's because it's the Gorn that had beamed them up. But of course the crew doesn't know this because it's supposed to surprise us because stupidity. Um, so yeah, so that's where the show basically ends. It's a cliffhanger. Basically, um, Ortegas and a bunch of, um, and Lana and a bunch of um, survivors have been taken by the Gorn and the Enterprise has been ordered out. So what does Pike do? He's taking fire. You know, he doesn't want to abandon the crew, and that's where the 2B continues comes up, which is a little bit of a risk considering the writers and actors strike and the situation of Paramount Plus cancelling everything and streaming um, sort of not sort of working out. And I'm sure there'll be a season three, but I wouldn't have risked a um, two-parter um, in the current sort of climate. But um, that's what we get. And I was dreading this episode like I've been dreading the last couple of episodes. I really had a lot of um, hope for the second season. I paid for Paramount Plus, I um, bought season one on Blu-ray because I thought there were some good episodes and I sort of was hoping that the issues that they had in the later season would be fixed or addressed and they kind of addressed it by making, establishing 
and really pointing out that this is an alternative timeline. You know, they're still claiming it's the same canon universe, but what does it matter if it's a different timeline, just like the Kelvin timeline, it, you know, it's different, so nothing relates. So, you know, why not just admit it's a different universe, but whatever. Um, so they're kind of explaining the reboot nature of the series with the new timeline, so yeah, so it's interesting, but um, yeah, it wasn't a great episode. I mean, if, if they had created a new species, a new big bad, it would have been better than just turning the Gorn into the alien xenomorph and just ripping off Alien. Um, the acting was good, the characters are good, the production design's good. There are a lot of good things about the show, but there's, they just keep going in the wrong direction and, and things that just don't work, they just keep double downing on. But um, I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. I don't want to go to 11 minutes. I'm sort of relieved the whole series over. I don't have to deal with it for a while.